أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is part three or the concluding episode of this lecture dealing with the secrets of the fasting from Imam Ghazali's Ihya Ulum al-Din or based on Imam Ghazali's Ihya Ulum al-Din. So in the first episode, we talked about the fasting of the ordinary folks, Salmul Umum. So the fasting of ordinary folks, and that's a fast that's, uh, that focuses on fulfilling the legal requisites of the fast, that being specifically uh, avoiding anything that will break the fast involving eating or drinking or sexual relations uh, during the daytime of Ramadan. So we, we talked about that. And the, port the importance and foundation on the nature of that, breaking that fast involves consuming something that will break the fast or engaging in relations uh, with the opposite gender that would break the fast. The second fast we talked about, we talked about rather during the second episode was Salmul Khusus, the fast of those who are trying to distinguish themselves, elevate themselves spiritually. And that fast was refraining or restraining the limbs from sin, restraining the tongue, restraining the eyes, restraining the, the ears and all of the limbs of our bodies from engaging in sinful behavior. Breaking that fast, which would not legally necessarily break the fast, but would violate the spirit of the fast and the etiquettes of the fast, would be involving in those sinful behaviors, telling a lie, backbiting, slandering, looking at, at some illicit material. That would break the fast of the khusus, the final fast that Imam Ghazali talks about in the highest level of fast is the fast of the spiritual elect, those who have gone through the stages of spiritual development and growth and now they are mature and they are purified spiritual beings. And that is Salmu Khososil Khosos, the fasting of the spiritual elect. That fast, my dear brothers and sisters, as Imam al-Ghazali reminds us, that fast is to refrain, is the fast rather, if the first is the fast of the stomach and the private part, and the second is the fast of the limbs, the tongue, the ears, the eyes, the hands, etc. This fast is the fast of the heart. It's the fast of the heart. And that fast is protecting our hearts from aspiring for anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, during the fast. This fast, the fast of the heart, is allowing our heart to think of, to reflect on anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God. This fast, is the fast of longing, our hearts longing to meet Almighty God and understanding that the fast itself is one of the greatest means for us to build up the, the reward, the treasure of good deeds and edger that pushes us towards that meeting like nothing else. This fast is the fast of the heart. My dear brothers and sisters, the fast of the spiritual elect is a fast 
that we strive to move towards. That first level of fasting we mentioned, we convert. I'm a convert to Islam. We convert to Islam and we try to do everything right legally. And when we can do that and we can take that seriously, as we mentioned, that's an enlightened beginning. To go back to Ibn Ta'alam and Ashraqat Bidayatuhu Bil Amal, whose beginning is illuminated with action, sincere actions that conform to the legal requisites of the religion, Ashraqat Nihayatuhu, then their end will be enlightened. And that enlightened end is the enlightened heart. Ramadan, as we mentioned, is the month of the Qur'an, Shah Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Where was that Qur'an revealed to? Allah Ta'ala tells us, we don't have to guess, guess rather. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِي جِبْرِيلَ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَى قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Say whoever is an enemy unto the angel Gabriel who brings the revelation down to your heart. And so if Ramadan is the month of the Quran, Ramadan is the month of the heart, my dear brothers and sisters, because the Quran came into this world. The eternal speech of Almighty God manifested itself in this world first through the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the, the, how could the month of Qur'an not be a month ultimately of the heart? How can the fast of Ramadan ultimately not evolve and grow and mature within us to a fast of our heart, the place where the revelation began? And this is a reminder for us, my dear brothers and sisters, that Islam is all about the heart. The revelation began in the heart. Our progress as Muslims, but more importantly, as spiritual creatures, involves the ability of our heart to absorb that message. Those who took it from the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, they're not called students, muta'allimin, darisin, tulab, talaba. They're not called students, they're called companions, as sahaba. Why is that? Because they were those who were in his physical presence and being in their physical presence, that revelation which enlightened his heart, the light of that revelation can, could spread and touch their hearts. And therefore our Prophet وسلم, is described in what way? Yes, he was a witness. Ya Nabi, inna arsannaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadheera wa da'i'an illallahi bi'idhnihi wa sirajan munira. O Prophet, we have sent you as a witness, as a giver of glad tidings, and as a warner, as one who calls to the path of Allah by his command, وَسِرَاجًا munira, and as a luminous lamp. He was a light, brothers and sisters, and that light emanated from a heart that was illuminated by the Qur'an. And that Quranic light which shone from his heart, it touched the hearts of those in his vicinity. And that's why they're called companions. They shared his physical presence. Therefore, they shared the light that emanated from his heart. And that light illuminated our hearts, just as that siraj and munira, a candle, a lamp can light an infinite number of others. We could bring one candle after another, dip it into that light, and it's lit, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the million, and the billion, and the trillion, and they're all illuminated, and it never diminishes from the intensity and the luminosity of the original light. And so that light shines on, brothers and sisters. It shines on through us. 
and it's enhanced in Ramadan. It's enhanced in Ramadan. And as we go Ramadan after Ramadan and we strive spiritually and we strive to engage in the fast of the khusus and we mature, our hearts are capable of undertaking that final fast. Salmu khusus il khusus the fast of the spiritual mature and elect. And so we focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We strive for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fill our tongues with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We fill our tongues with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we're successful, we don't miss that television that we turned off. We don't miss participating in those gossip rooms that we refrain from. We don't miss listening to the boogie woogie bugle boy of company B. We don't miss any of those things that distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we focus on this during Ramadan. And like all other aspects and levels of our fasting, this makes it all the, all the easier for us when Ramadan ends to carry those good habits forth, to carry those good habits forth. When we can refrain from those things that are lawful, good, and pure during Ramadan, the legal fast, refrain from the mufattirat, those things that will break our fast of fuel, food, and drink, and relations, how much with our lawful spouses, how much easier is it to refrain from forbidden things once Ramadan passes? If we can refrain during the month of Ramadan as we engage in the fast, some al khusus, of refrain, restraining our limbs, restraining our eyes, re restraining our ears from dealing with, listening to, looking at those things that are forbidden during, during Ramadan, how much easier once Ramadan passes to refrain from those things because we've gone into intense training. And if our hearts during Ramadan can be filled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, filled with the remembrance of Allah, filled with the Quran, the words of Allah, filled with the focus on the pleasure of Allah, filled with taking every opportunity to seek the pleasure of Allah and paradise and to any prayer that we make. And Ramadan's a time, a special time, and a, 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 a special blessed time. Sharf al-Zaman, when our prayers are answered. We pray whatever we pray for. Let us conclude that and complement that with a prayer for the pleasure of Allah in Jannah. Oh, ya Allah, barik lana. Ya Allah, a'atina al-najah wal-falah fi hadha wa dhak. Wa ya Allah, inni as'aluka ridaka wal-jannah. Ya Allah, I ask you for your good pleasure and for paradise. Ya Allah, inni as'aluka ridaka wal-jannah. Ya Allah, I ask you for your good pleasure and I ask you for paradise. Ya Allah, inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah. Ya Allah, I ask you for your good pleasure and for paradise. And this becomes our weird, if you will, during Ramadan. How much easier outside of Ramadan will it be to continue that practice and hopefully till the next Ramadan and then the next, and it becomes Ramadan reinforcement and then sustaining during the year. Reinforcement during Ramadan, sustaining it throughout the year until not just Ramadan, but our entire life and all of our time is filled with longing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is filled with listening to and reflecting on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is filled with remembering the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that longing and that involvement and that commitment translates into the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
translates into the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our life has been actualized in terms of actualizing the essence of our being, the dis thing that distinguishes us. As we mentioned in the very first lecture, the thing that distinguishes us from the animals, our spiritual essence will have been actualizing and in actualizing and then making permanent that distinction, we would have actualized our true humanity. And this ultimately, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the ultimate objective of the fast. It started in the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we struggled and grew. Our hearts were involved in that process of transformation as our Lord mentions in the Qur'an. Uh, in the Qur'an, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not reflect and ponder on the Qur'an? Or are their hearts sealed? The heart, Prophet's heart, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was open. And so it was reflective to that Qur'an. And in striving, for the pleasure of Allah and remembering Allah and focusing on Allah and directing our himma, our highest and most powerful aspirations towards Allah, our hearts open and they're no longer sealed. And that Quranic light enters our hearts, transferred to us ultimately from the heart of the Prophet Wasallam, And then we're prepared to meet our Lord at the end of our affair, once we've exited this world. Where are we headed, my dear brothers and sisters? On a day, no amount of children or wealth will be of any benefit. The only one benefited will be one who comes before God, Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with a rectified heart. And nothing, there's no greater opportunity in this world for us to rectify our hearts than Ramadan. Jibril brings the revelation to the heart of the Prophet. Do they not reflect on the Qur'an? And what better time, what more, re, more felicitous time than Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an? Or are their hearts sealed? Ramadan unseals the hearts and the Qur'anic message can illuminate us. And then at the end, we become muttaqi. And what is the muttaqi? Where is taqwa? At taqwa huna. Taqwa is here, and he pointed to his chest, meaning his heart, three times. Ramadan, the month of the Qur'an, the month of fasting. The month of Ramadan, uh, the fasting has been ordained for you. And as it was ordained for those who preceded you, in order that you will become mindful of Allah in your heart. The Quran. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Ramadan Quran. The Quran is the book, the scripture. No doubt about it. It is guidance for those who have taqwa in their hearts, whose hearts have been open for the message of the Qur'an. And fasting opens it up. So fasting opens our hearts for the fast of the heart to focus on our Lord and rectifies and reforms and matures and develops our hearts so that we're in a state to meet our Lord and succeed. This is Imam Zayd Shakir. This concludes 
our reflections on the secrets of fasting based on the Ihya, Ulum al -Din, revival of the sciences of religion by the great, great scholar, Imam Abu Hamid, Muhammad bin Muhammad al-Ghazali. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah bless us to continue to benefit from him. May Allah Ta'ala bless Zaytuna College to be an institute dedicated amongst other things to the preservation of the Ghazalian legacy in the world. This is Imam Zayd Shakir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We've been honored to share these reflections with you. We pray that we can do them, uh, can do this again. May your hearts be blessed and may your hearts be enlightened. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.